Hi, today I'm going to talk about CXL ways to memory expansion for the storage. My name is Myungsu, and before jumping into the main talk, uh, let me briefly explain what this presentation handles. While the data size is getting bigger across all different computing domains, most systems nowadays face memory wall. Thus, there is a significant need to employ storage as working memory for a long time. In this work, we will check what kind of technology exists to make SSDs byte addressable memory in the past, and we'll explore a new opportunity that Compute Express Link CXL, can bring. We will also see several concerns that system designer and architect need to consider for storage integrated memory expander using our hardware prototype. In this talk, we will also share some guidelines for better use of CXL-based SSDs. Let me show what would be the benefit if we can bridge the disparity between the block and byte semantics and introduce what kind of approach tried it to fill such a gap. There are many software and hardware approaches to leverage PCI storage as a working memory because of two main benefits, large storage capacities and non-volatility. The flash non-volatility can be useful for data persistence control in many applications which can open new computing scenarios. In addition, per bank flash capacity is more than 16 times bigger than enterprise production level DRAMs. Flashes can be also integrated into a device more than DRAM, which can bring way better per gigabyte prices than all the memory technologies. Achieving large memory can open a new door for big data application by enabling more exploration and analysis with higher accuracy and better quality. There were many attempts to make an SSD or a part of which device byte addressable. Here, I only showed an example that can be found in the literature, such as a persistent memory region or the MV RAM cards, but I believe there are more industry byte addressable storage prototype that academia unfortunately cannot access. Here is how to prior approaches work. As backend media IO accesses granularity is much more closer than what working memory allows. The conventional approaches expose SSD internal DRAMs to the host. Specifically, in map, internal DRAM space to the PCI configuration spaces called bar, standing for base address register. Through PCI bar, the CPU can directly access the underlying SSD using memory instructions such as load and storage. If from now on, I will answer why we need CXL for storage integrated memory expansion even though the existing approaches can expose internal resources to the host through PCI bar. PCI-based memory expander is impractical due to its intrinsic nature. The low-level bandwidth of PCIe is sufficient to be a memory expander. Note that PCI 5.0 supports 4 GB per second per lane, which can deliver 64 GB per second per the endpoint device. The restriction to be a memory expander comes from what the PCI interface is exactly designed for. Remember, all PCI devices are just a pedal, pedal from the CPU viewpoint. Thus, the address spaces of PCIe is basically exposed through a memory mapped I.O. This means that the information written in PCI bars should be transparently visible to underlying devices. Intel and AMD do not allow the CPU side caching for PCIe related memory request to prevent the system from a malfunction of the PCI devices. New cache query interconnection technology called CXL addresses this restriction and allow the underlying device's memory to be mapped to a cacheable space. Let's dig deeper into the CXL protocol. The CXL basically consists of three different sub protocols which are built on upon the PCIe. The CXL.io is used for interface control, which is very similar to the PCIe, while the CXL.cache handles both memory request and query request. CXL.mem is mainly designed for handling memory request issued from the host to the underlying device. Note that the CXL.mem is not cache coherent, but make the differences between PCIe and CXL as it allows the CXL devices to be mapped to a cacheable system memory space. CXL.mem can expose the endpoint device memory resources to the host physical memory map called Host Managed Device Memory, HDM. 
When CPU generate memory instruction targeting to HDM mapped to the host system memory spaces, they will go through all the host memory hierarchy, including the CXL endpoint. As HDM is mapped to the system memory, the memory request can be cached at the on-chip storage. This means that, irrespective of cache corner management, the memory request heading to CXL endpoint benefit from on-chip CPU cache. Thus, the underlying memory of the CXL endpoint is accessed only if there is a cache misses. For better understanding, I prepare a side-by-side -side comparison. In this comparison, the left side and the right side figure show PCI-based and CXL-enabled storage integrated memory expanders, respectively. The memory hierarchy excludes PCI-based storage integrated memory expanders, which exhibit long endpoint latencies all the time. In contrast, CXL SSDs are in the memory hierarchy just like a local memory. They can take all the benefit that CPU caches bring up. Now let me introduce what we require considering for CXL to build a storage integrated memory expander. To enable CXL for the storage integrated memory expander, we must decide which CXL device type can be used first. The device type is basically determined based on how the CXL server protocols are combined to use. There are three types of CXL devices, type 1 and 2 and 3, and type 1 uses CXL.io and CXL.cache, which is basically designed for an accelerator that has no device-side memory. Type 3 uses CXL.io and CXL.mem, while the type 2 includes CXL.cache in addition to the sub-protocols that type 3 employs. A memory expander can be incarnated as type 2 or type 3, as both can expose device-side memory through the CXL.mem, but we believe Type 3 is the best fit for storage integrated memory expanders. In case where Type 2 is used for, the address spaces that CPU and SSD manage should be coherent. In other words, when the SSD firmware and controller accesses its internal memory media, it must communicate with the host for coherent management. This causes excessive cache coin traffic, which slows down memory accesses. Because of these issues, even though Type 3 is a passive device design, we believe it is better than Type 2 to build the CXL-enabled storage integrated memory expanders. But from now on, we will touch on how to enable a storage integrated memory expander as a CXL Type 3 device in general. The storage integrated memory expander has a CXL controller, which is connected to host through the CXL root port. When there is a cache miss, mail memory request arrive at the CXL root port. The CXL root port then generate a transaction packet called a CXL fleet by obeying what the CXL.mem and CXL.io sub protocols define. The underlying CXL controllers parses request information from the CXL transaction packet and sends it to the backend. From the architectural viewpoint, a minor modification is enough to enable a CXL SSD. Basically, the CXL controller can be composed of underlying PCI endpoint and MVM controller with adoption of CXL.io and CXL.map respectively. One of the things that system designers and architects are interested in would be how much the memory performance can be slowed down as we have a CXL SSD. Here, we speculate on the performance of a CXL SSD enabled system with a hardware prototype that we build. For this evaluation, the CPU and storage are fabricated into the two separate custom FPJ board, which are connected through a tailored PCI backplane. As there is no CPU to support CXL yet, we integrate CXL.mem and CXL.io agents into an in-house RISC-V CPU and 32GB OpenExpress based NVMe storage in 16nm FPGA for host node and storage node respectively. For this performance projection, we also evaluate a local DRAM on the system and PCI bar based memory expander. This figure shows the system's latency in terms of CPU cycle for the best case, average case, and the worst case reported by a memory benchmark, Apex Map. Overall, the CPU performance, the CXL performance, is much better than the PCIe thanks to cache aids. We are somehow disappointed with the result as the CXL's worst case latency characteristics are far away from the DRAM behavior. 
However, most workloads exhibit high locality except for a specific application like a graph processing. So considering the largest capacity that storage integrated memory expander offer, we believe many applications can read the benefit of CXL. By far, we checked how the CXL can be integrated into the CXL SSD and the potential benefit that they can bring on. So let's see how we can make aggregate pool with storage-based memory expanders and what we need to add up something more in CXL. The user may want to disaggregate CXL controller and storage devices from a system computing resources while keeping their byte addressability. To this end, the user must increase the pooled memory resources first. To increase the number of storage memory expanders from 1 to the N, CXL 2.0 allows the target system to employ one or more CXL switches, each enabled to have multiple devices. Even though the CXL yet leaves a question undecided on how to implement a switch and an internal component such as an upstream port and the downstream port, they can be simply interconnected by a reconfigurable crossbar switch and the fabric manager. As a downstream port is feasible to connect another switch, it can form a multi-level switch architecture, which can help a user to expand memory resources more than N that a single CXL switch can support. On the other hand, to better utilize storage resources, we can also connect arbitrary numbers of host CPUs to the CXL network. The multi-host connection can be managed by the CXL switch virtualization. Specifically, the switches remember each connection between upstream port and downstream ports. Thus, we can fabricate a unique routing path beginning from a host to one or more storage devices called a virtual hierarchy. Each virtual hierarchy guarantees that a storage device can be mapped to a host, which is attached anywhere in the CXL network. While this reconfigurable virtual hierarchy can realize a fully scale-out architecture, memory resources expanded by the storage devices are unfortunately tricky to control finally. Since the storage device should only be associated with a host, it can be underutilized and or unbalanced across different CPUs. To address this issue, we can virtualize each storage device to be shared by different hosts. The CXL allows a system to logically split each endpoint into the multiple type 3 devices up to 16 called multiple logical devices, MLD. So we can make each MLD define its own HDM, which can be mapped to a different place of any host of system memory, similar to a physical storage device. As each MLD associated with the same storage device can be a part of different virtual hierarchies, it is expected to utilize underlying storage resources better by allocating the memory expanders in a finer granular manner. As the final step, let's check the possibility of annotating the instruction with a hint. In the performance projection, we assume that there is no heavy internal task. While the CXL allows the memory instruction to work asynchronously, user may want to avoid such unexpected SSD behavior and internal task in many cases. For example, the acceptable load latency may be around a microseconds. However, the memory request can be delayed due to SSD internal tasks such as read reclaiming and the garbage collection. In similar, the tolerable flush latency would be milliseconds. However, the user can experience long flush latency due to SSD's large internal buffer and unpredictable caching policies. Thus, we suggest an annotation method that allows user to send a hint to an SSD such as latency determinism or the vulnerability that this work suggests. This hint can let underlying storage know whether the latency should be served right away or can be buffered or not considering the data persistence. The annotation can be done in a CXL loot port or low-level programming thereby leveraging the host side information in better. Then CXL controller behave appropriately based on which hints is piggybacked. As a CXL yet under development and emerging, there is no perfect answers on how designed to use the storage-based memory expanders, which will be more challengeable than DRAM-based memory expansion over CXL. Considering the time limit, I only show a few scenarios, but you can find out more information in the paper or our website. In a future work, we are working on integrating the annotation mechanism and switches for the scalable storage disaggregation. Thank you for listening.